Greetings, it is Maxo Diddly here, and today I am here with another GRP tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with reading a column from a CSV or text file with Java. So, you've got a text file. In fact, let's open up ours to illustrate the point. So, in your Java project folder, uh, we're going to have a little text file called data.txt. This is going to contain data separated by commas. Now, this will work if it's also something like data.csv, or it can be any name because you can do what you want. But this is the data we're going to be working with in the tutorial. We've got an ID, a name, and an age. And we've got a few records here. And basically, in previous tutorials, which if you haven't watched, I strongly recommend you watch them. Some of them are YouTube classics like Simply, Verify, User Login in Java, or Write into a CSV file in Java, Reading a Record from a CSV file in Java, or classics you should, you should watch. But, we've always focused on reading a record or a row. Why don't we read for columns? And a YouTube commenter gave me this idea, so big shout out, uh, thank you for this idea, for this really, really cool twist on a popular concept that I've made many videos on milking it. So today we're going to be reading columns in Java. And what I mean is, let's say we want to read the first column. Well, we're going to print out 1234, 5420, and 0161. Let's say we want to read the second column. We're going to print out Jeff, Musk, and Stephen. Let's say we want to read the third column. We'll print out 225023. That's what I mean. If you want to read a row, click the eye up in the corner for a whole playlist on how to do that. But today we're going to be doing columns, so let's get right into the code. Firstly, make sure you import java.io.bufferedreader, java.io.filereader, and java.util.arraylist. We'll be needing these libraries for this tutorial. If you're lazy, you can right click and click fix imports later on when you type code. So, in our main method, we have got string array data equals read col to data.txt and a comma. And then we've got a for loop to print out this string array. This is calling our function, it's going to return a string array, which is going to contain every col column data thingy majigo. So let's get right into the code in it. We're going to do public static string array, meaning this will return a string array to whatever the function is called. We're going to call it read col because I'm too lazy to write column. Then we've got int col as our first parameter. This is going to be which column we want to read. Then we've got string file path. This is going to be the file we want to read the columns from. And string delimiter. What's character or sequence of characters is being used to separate each field of a record. In most cases it's a comma, but the flexibility is there. And once again, just to debunk any potential people saying these aren't CSV files, if you use this on a .csv file, this will also work. So don't worry, this will work on a CSV file or a text file, it will work in many file formats if there's text to be read. First things first, we're going to make a string array called data. This is going to be used to store the data of the current record we're reading. String current line stores the data of the current line we're reading as a string. Add array list cold data equals new array list string comma bracket thingies semicolon. We're creating an array list here. This array list is going to be used to store all the column data as we go through the code, as we go through the file. Next, we have this big chunk of code, but don't worry, we're going to break this down very slowly so you can understand. Firstly, we got a try catch statement. Try a bunch of code. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch. Otherwise, you can carry on and life is all good. And inside, you do system print line e to print out the exception, so we have a bit more information on what went wrong and return null because there's going to be nothing, so we're going to return a null. And in the try statement, we're going to do file reader fr equals new file reader, and we pass in file path in the brackets. Then we're going to make a buffered reader, br equals new buffered reader fr, and fr is our file reader from before. So we've basically set up the person who's going to read our book, let's say. 
then we're going to do while current line equals br.readline is not equal to null. This while loop is going to continue iterating as long as the next line in the file is not equal to null, meaning there's a we're going to loop through this file until there are no more lines to be read. Then we're going to do data, which is our string array here, equals current line dot split delimiter. So let's say we've got a string, nice little record in our file, and it's got 420 for the number, Elon for the name, and 69 for the age, and each one has a comma in between them. Currently we've just got one string, but after this function is being called which is the dot split function, what we're going to have is, is an array, a string array. And 420 is going to have its own element. Elon's going to have its own element. And 69 is going to have its own element. And this makes it really easy to interact with each field of the record. Then we do call data, which is referenced in our array list, dot add. And then data which is referenced in our string array here, and col in the square brackets, which is represented in our int here. What we're telling the code is, hey, add the data in our desired column to our array list, because we want to read all the data in one column, and this is what we're doing. So if you want to read the first column, you put in a zero. Want to read the second column, put in a one. Want to read the third column, put in a three. Want to read the third column, it doesn't exist, so you'd get an error. Obviously, your file can have more than three columns, don't worry. After the catch statement, we're going to do return call data dot two array new string zero and then semicolon after. So we're converting our array list into a string array, and which is why we've got the new string zero inside here. Otherwise, it would be an object array, and you'd have a bunch of errors. And because we want to use a string array, not an object array, it's easier this way. Trust me. And that's it for the tutorial. So let's get into showing the code in action. Make sure to save your work. And we're going to read the final column of this file. Let's hit control S and play. And it read 22, 50 and 23. If we consult our file, that is correct. Let's put in our one. Jeff, Musk, and Stefan. As you can see, Jeff, Musk, and Stefan, those are the values. Let's type in a zero. As you can see, it's printed out the IDs of these people. And that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like in the comment if you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more high quality Java tutorials. I do like to toot my own trumpet there, or blow my own trumpet, I should say. And thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.